Hello golfers, welcome back to JD Golf TV, your home for playing better, faster. This video is going to discuss something really important that we never talk about because we want to talk about wrist angles and ground forces and kinetics and kinematics. I, I don't even know what I just said. Okay, yes, I do. But the fact is, we never talk about what I call swingness. So this is part one of swingness. There's your golf swing, folks, and then your golf swingness. And they're not the same. So let's get after it. I never made it past mini tour golf. You know, I tried. I, 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 gave it, I gave it my absolute best, folks. I just plain wasn't good enough. Didn't know what I know now. So I've been on, since then, quite a long search for finding things out. So at least I'm a lot better about knowing what I didn't know back then. If you're a good player, even if you're not a good player, but if you're a pretty good player, if, if you're really bad at golf, this may not pertain to you. But some of you folks have done this, where you go out there and you play great. You know what you're swimming. You've, you've videotaped it from both views, maybe even a couple more views. And you know what your swing looks like. And then the very next day, you go out and you play horrible. And you go, what? So if you're, especially if you're like a highly competitive golfer, when the poop hits the fan, you're going straight to the video or and or the launch monitor go, what the hell did I change? And then this is the thing that will happen sometimes. It'll look exactly the same as always. The ball's flying different. It feels like crap. And the swing looks the same. Folks, there's something else going on. There is something else. For instance, when you watch uh, Rory McIlroy hit these unbelievably beautiful shots, and then he hits one sideways, do you, especially if you've been working on golf, if you've been working on your golf game, you know this, how hard it is to change a golf swing. Do you think that Rory McIlroy just invented a brand new golf swing that whole so the swingness factor that we're going to talk about first is rhythm. Now, I know that we'd like to say that uh, rhythm doesn't count. You can be fast or you can be slow. But folks, when you get out of rhythm, it changes your timing, just like changing your force, tension level, balance, mental clarity. These are the swingness factors, among others, that we'll talk about in the coming videos, rhythm's a real good thing to really mess you up. Have you ever done this where you just, you, know, you didn't feel easy over shot and you tighten up or you rush the shot? I've stood next to Ernie else and it doesn't matter what club, he, it, he just never changes his rhythm. That said, Nick Price didn't suck at golf. And he was light speed fast, fast tempo, but he had a rhythm to it. And he repeated that tempo and that rhythm. The best players in the world are consistent with what they do. Okay, so how are you going to work on your rhythm? I call it the rhythm method. It's how I got here. Well, what you'd want to do is start just swinging. And you might start with just one hand. One potato, two. One potato, two. One potato, two. Get a little bounce. One potato, two. Okay? I can feel a little rhythm in my feet, too. I just keep swinging. Don't stop swinging. See the footwork a little bit? Right foot, left foot. That footwork, as we'll see in later episodes, that footwork is a wonderful timing mechanism. Okay? How about this? One potato, two. One potato, two. There's a ground. One potato, two. All right, so now I got a feel. I take it to two hands. One potato, two. 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 And one potato, two. 
Okay, what a wonderful way to work on that. Now, a really cool way to identify your own tempo is to play with it. Okay, one potato, two. One potato, two. That's really cool. But another cool way to do it is to take out your most favoritest club in the bag, the one that you hit the best. And as you're hitting shots with it, start to kind of come up with a count. Something like the one potato, two. One, uh, what did uh, VJ Singh said? 17. Anything like that to give you something you can kind of latch on to. And then hit that, let's say it's an eight iron. Okay, there's, all right, I got it. Maybe hit three, four, five in a row. Okay, I got it. Pick up a six iron. Boink. Now go right back to the eight iron. One, two, maybe three. Go to your hybrid. One. Couple with the eight iron. Go to your three wood. Four wood, no three woods. Same. And keep going back to your favorite club so you can renew the sense of rhythm, get all the way up to the driver. That will help you a ton because it is, I don't care what you hear on the internet. Yes, you're listening to this on the internet. I, I, I can tell the irony. <laughs> but folks, rhythm may not be the glue of your golf swing, but tell me something else. Do you think timing is not important in golf? Do you seriously think that you can reduce the requirements for timing? I think that is absolutely nuts. Let's put it this way. I think I have uh, over 20 degrees of freedom just in one arm and another in the other arm. And then I got all the other joints in this body. There's movement going all over the place. Rhythm is terribly important, just like maintaining your timing, which we will do next. Okay, get after it. Play with your rhythm. I bet it helps on the golf course immediately.